other job, lower job. Don't be scared. Talk to them. Make it work. Connect. Smile. Eye contact. Don't be scared to present you. Because that's what you want to present you. And you want somebody to see you and feel you and say, I want to do business with her. I want to do business with her. Or, I'm going to refer this person for some business. I get a lot of calls. People like, can you, you know somebody in Walmart? You know this? I said, who are you asking for? Do I know this person? Hmm? No, well, I get that, but some of the people that, that I want well, my connectivity to, I don't want to dilute them with ask for somebody who, you, you follow me? Right. You just don't want to dilute that. So don't be scared. Perception is, is really it's the way of life. Perception is key. And that's why people get the bins, get this, because they want to have an image. They want to have a perceived value, you know, and a high comment sometimes, you know, but they want to have it. That's real talk. That's real talk. You want to have it, but your perception, the way people look at you, will basically help collapse time. It will help collapse time and what you want to do and where you're trying to go. And guess what? You can go as far as you can see and believe. You can go. You can go. Every now and then, just you hear about people doing something crazy, shooting up people, this and that, because the frequency that they're on is somewhat satanic or crazy or whatever, but it's a different frequency. But if you just elevate yourself to a higher frequency, a higher frequency, because it's a higher frequency. Elevate your belief, your vision, your company to a higher place. I remember when T.I., he was in jail, did a video, and he came out and said, I'm the king. I'm the king. I said, who is this little rapper that nobody knows? But he said he was what? The king. He elevated his frequency. Muhammad Ali, one of the best. Who put the butt plus didn't want to be, but he elevated. He elevated his energy and his channel that he was going to rip that his opponent's butt to the fact that he got to him. And he became very successful in doing it because you, he claimed it. He spoke it into existence. That's what you have to do. Speak your power, your vision into existence. That's why I'm very careful of sometimes what I say to people and about people. Very, very careful. So you want to make sure your perceived value is very high. Those three years, maybe four, that we were bootstrapping, we went from the Ritz Carlton, to the St. Regis, to Puerto Rico, to New York, to Miami. I had a big event in Miami. Budget was tight. Shoot. I had to be there. I had to be there. I caught the train. I had to be there. Nobody knew I caught the train. I had to be there. I had to be there. I had to show up. By any means, I had to show up. I had to show up. And then from New York, I caught Mega Bus to DC. I had to be there. I had to show up. I kept my Hugo Ball suit, put it on, stepped off out of that bus. <laughs> you have to be there. You have to show up. You have to show up. Show up. Show up. Show up. That's half the battle. Sometimes you lose it. Oh, wow, I wish I went to that. I should have been there. You didn't show up. And sometimes. I'm just saying that sometimes it might be a ticket event. Yes, the great event. Did I say I had a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> but did I say it was five steps? I've been wrong. <laughs> did I say I had a tuxedo on? <laughs> did I show up? Yes. <laughs> and believe it or not, believe it or not, two months later in Atlanta Magazine, I'm one of the couple. <laughs> 
my day, and they're taking a picture of us, of the people that was at the uh, white coat. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? They had to call me and ask me my name. That's why I call the ERT. Perceive that. Perceive that. Perceive that. Show up. Show up. I, uh, there's a guy named Ron Brown. I was in politics a lot, as you know, I just said. Ron Brown was the um, president of DC and also Secretary of Commerce, and he uh, made, had a tragic plane crash. But I read his book, and he went to Harvard, and he used to read all the accounts of social events, and he had a tuxedo. And Ron Brown said, guess what? Every time there was an event, he had his tuxedo, he put it on, he showed up. He showed up, he did his networking, he made his connectivity, his perceived value was high. He already was at Harvard, okay? He had his perceived value, he made it work. You can make it work. Ladies, get your, what's nice, everyone has a little what, black dress, is that it? Is that correct? You got your little, all, you, you know, be ready. Be ready. Don't make it a production, be ready. You know, be ready, get your little, Whatever, well, let's just say your black skirt or dress on and make it work. Your pearls, make it work. The pearls are nice, by the way. They're really very classy. It's a very, way you present yourself your brand, and it says, you follow me, and I see it, and I feel it. You know, I do. And, but you have to do that. You have to show up. You have to look presentable. I can't tell you how many white shirts I have. I can't tell you. Brothers, keep a good white shirt. It just doesn't matter what you have on a king white shirt. This is a white shirt. It works. This is a white shirt. It works. It just it makes you look mm. You look about the business. You look about the business. And that's half the battle of looking about the business. Because that's how you're going to do some business. You got to look about the business. Now, in different cultures, their presentation might be different, but that's part of their swag. Because, you know, I'm going to just. Some of the hip poppers of the millennials, you don't know who's who and what's what, but that's part of their brand. Mm -hmm. That's not for everyone, but that's part of the brand and it's working for them. Find something that works for you. Find something that works for you. Simple, simple, classy, timeless presentation. You can make it work in any season. Always just have a nice, clean presentation that's part of your perceived value. It's very important to have a high perceived value. One of the ways I've elevated my, what I think is a decent perceived value, is I took a page out of the rapper. So I'm, you know, with this particular organization or company or this particular executive, you, when you see me, you might see me with. Uh, the general manager of Mercedes Benz or the executive of, of um, Coca Cola or Georgia Pacific, you, you will see that association that works and it's true. You know, you will see it. So, therefore, my brand is, if you don't mind me saying it, vanilla. You follow me? It's vanilla. So, you don't get paid in, you know, diversity is key. Let's just put it like that. Diversity is key. Diversity is key. So when you build your brand, you want to make sure that you align yourself with somebody that's worthy, that has a value, that makes it work. You want to make sure you align yourself with a cause or a value, so that makes sure your perceived value is very important. And I want to make sure that you, like when you go to church, you come to church a certain way. Everyone's dressed up, everyone looks good. You know, because church has a perceived value that you respect. So respect your business, respect yourself. Like that, coming in correct. Am I doing okay? Yeah. Okay. Number six. Examine the touchables. If you pull out your phone, if you pull out your Rolodex, 
I think about who you have access to. Who's your touchable? Who do you have access to? Is it all your girlfriends, all your cousins, all your exes? Who are your touchables? <clears throat> you want to have touchables that you can call in corporate space, in community space. You want to have good touchables. Touchables people that you can touch. If you need, if you got a business plan, who are you going to call for? Let's just say $10,000. You got anybody in your phone that you can call for ten thousand? Let's let's just make it simple. A thousand? No, let's go with a hundred. Who's your touchables? Who's your touchables? Who is your, take a good look of who you have access to? Examine who that you can have access to. Who can respond to an email? Who can you call? Who can who who do you have? You have to have access to information, access to people of influence, people of power. You want to make sure you align yourself and you have good touchables, great touchables. The secretaries that I are, they are my touch points. Because I can touch them and they can point me someplace else. That's a touch point. A touchable is somebody I, I can send a proposal to or get in, 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 in novellas or Walmart and get $25,000. You follow me? That's a touch. You, that, you, you want to have those touchables. You want to examine your touchables. You got to get your weight up. Not, not even your social media, but you got to get your touchable weight up. We all got to get your weight up. And sometimes, Challenge yourself to do something different. If I smoke cigars sometimes, so every now and then I might ride out to Roswell Road Cigar City Club because I know that's a place of influence that I might want to, you know, go to. Sometimes I might go to lunch, I might drive all the way to Alpharetta. You hear me? But you want to change your environment sometimes. You, that's the only way. You're going to really expand and change your environment. I go to the Four Seasons every now and then, sit down there at the Four Seasons, get one glass of wine, and just smile. Talk to people. And next thing you know, you're holding court. Shirley Franklin's in there every other Friday. Julius Hollis, Walter Young. They, you know, they, that's Charles Barkley because he lives upstairs. But change your environment. Change your environment. Mix it up. Even for organizations, say, say you want to do work with the pets or the cancer society or whatever it is. Find an organization that you haven't ever worked for before, did anything. Go to a meeting, Sierra Club, whatever it is. But go into a new space and have touchables. There was a guy. He was in between blessings, looking for a job. You know what he did? He looked up Toastmasters. And he said, well, there's Toastmasters in my area named Greenbrier. And then there's a Toastmaster at Ansley Park on the Denny Buckhead. He went to the other Toastmasters. He changed his environment. Went to the Toastmasters, just started going, joined the Toastmasters, it was 20 bucks. Getting coffee, he became familiar with people. Hey, you know what? Hey, I'm looking for a job. Send me your resume. You know, I'm over city of Atlanta, blah, blah, blah. He's been working there eight years now. He found his connection at Toastmasters. He found his connection at Toastmasters. He expanded his, his horizons. He went to a new space. There was a young attorney. She volunteered at Grady to hold crack babies. She used to just hold crack babies. Today she's married to a doctor. She met him while she was holding the crack baby. She, you know, she had a nice presentation, but she had a good heart. You follow me? And she didn't come there looking for a doctor to be married, but she came there because she wanted to do something else and help somebody. So she was authentic, but the Lord had something special for him. Boom, 
put it right in the path. You never know, but find a group of organizations that you can volunteer and make it work. Do that. I challenge you to stretch. I challenge you to look at something that you might want to do or you might think about doing or you know it's a good cause. And just show up at a meeting, show up, volunteer, but just be authentic about it. But also be strategic. And be strategic about it. But you have to sometimes come out of your comfort zone. Because sometimes your world is your you follow me? You, you wanna you wanna get in another space. You wanna mix it up a little bit. You know, you want to introduce your brand to another market because we all need exposure. Exposure is key. That's how people sell products. That's why commercials are selling. Exposure. You want exposure. So I challenge you to identify something that's dear to your heart, something that you want to do. It might be, I don't know what it is, but find it and make it work. You know, check it out. Join it, volunteer. Sometimes, even when they do those black tie events, hey, just call and volunteer sometimes. And show up, now you're in, and you can make it work that way. You don't have to, you know, do what I do, or did. But you know, but make it work that way. But find, you know, you, you done that before. You crashed something before, haven't you? Huh? Who's crashed something before? <laughs> All right, Kenny, I see your hand. Please grab something for us. Okay, you know, but that's what the Lord wanted you to be, you know. And you know, you make it work. You definitely make it work. See, I love to see that smile. That's that just it's warm when you smile. It's beautiful. Did you just send me an email? I did. Huh? I did. Okay, I purposely didn't respond. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I understand, I understand, I understand. See, she's good. <laughs> she's good. See, now I will respond. But you want to make sure you examine your touchables, expand your touchables, and don't be scared to push yourself. Don't be scared to stretch. Do not be scared. It took me two days to get the I found a Latino in the NBA in procurement I'm doing an event there called Business and Basketball. I said, so I called George Jimenez. And I hit him, sent him a message. We weren't LinkedIn partners, but I sent him a message and he accepted me. And then I asked him to come down. He told me he was busy during the NBA game. <laughs> so we've been communicating, but he didn't know me from Adam, but we're communicating now. You know, we're communicating, but it took me just two days. I just sent him a message, he replied back. He still said no. You know, he said no. But then I said, well, just give me your email so I can just keep in touch with you. So he sent me his email. I don't know where that's going to go, but he doesn't know. I also asked his boss. He's a manager, so I also asked the director, the other senior VP also. <laughs> you know, because I don't, I don't take no what? Well, no. You know, we just hope it works out like it's going to work out. Yeah. So, but don't be scared to reach out to Mr. Jimenez <laughs> or whomever. But you have power to make it work, and you have to make sure you're touchables. Does anybody have a touchable outside of family that you can call for business and say, I have a business, I need $10,000? Oh, good. One? Good. Really? Good. Good. Guess what? That's valuable. That's very valuable because that means somebody believes in that person enough, and I said outside of family, believes in that person enough and understand that they support you. I recently had a gentleman, um, after I bought my new ball, I had a gentleman at the law firm, and we went and I touched base, and next you know, he wrote me a check. You know, because he says, guess what? I believe in you. And matter of fact, set me up for every year I can give you this donation. Oh. Real talk. Am I right, God? I think I told you that. And that, that, that really happened. Very prominent gentleman. But it took a minute for him to see my spirit, see my commitment, see my will. I'm just getting around to my community saying, what's up, my hands? 
you know, because when I jumped into the Hispanic community 10 years ago, I speak very little Spanish, by the way. Very little Spanish. Uh, for those who don't know, I run an organization called the National Black and Latino Council. We unite Hispanics, Latinos, and African Americans to do business. It's like two chamber of commerce. Um, and about 3,000 members, seven organizations in New York, Miami, Washington, yeah, one in Puerto Rico, I don't know where that is now, uh, in uh, Chicago, and a member of the state with the Tennessee Latin, um, Latin American Chamber. But, and, and, and the Hispanics view me as one of the top five or ten leaders in the region. In the region. I don't speak Spanish fluently. You follow me? But I created a space that, again, the Hispanic community embraced me more than my own community. That's what I'm saying. They embraced me more. George Powell had an event for Hispanic leaders with Paul Bowles, who's the president of George Powell, doing Hispanic Heritage Month. I got an email for it. This, this is great. I RZP and sent it to my colleague, Hugo Hernandez, Hugo Hernandez, and told him to RZP. They told him no. <laughs> He's the co-founder with me. They, said, they, said, they told him no, they said no. I'm like, wow. You know, my perceived value. My perceived value. The little backstory of George Powell, I, uh, I, I told you I worked at the mail room, but I also had to leave carrying the box. They, they let me go. Years ago, they let me go because I had a company car and I did something I shouldn't do. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So to come full circle and to be standing next to Paul Wallace, who's the president, in a Hispanic event, recognizing a Hispanic leader, I shared that with Paul. I said, let me tell you something. I used to work with George Powell. They put me through school. They helped me out. But I made a misstep. You know, but I took that misstep with letting me be here with you today. And I'm so happy to be here with you. My name is Lance. Follow me? True story. I've written in two letters since then. Follow-up is very important. I've written in two letters and talked about his employees. Talked about his employees. Um, Southwest Airlines, Queen, we'll go back to her. Queen gave me those tickets and she's been taking care of us. So I took a step back and I said, who's the president of Southwest Airlines? I moved it. Gary Kelly. I said, okay, then. I got it. I said, let me find the corporate office number. It's in Dallas. I called two or three times. Because, you know, sometimes I just can't get through. I called two or three times. I found somebody there that gave me his email. I sent Gary Kelly a letter praising Queenie about how wonderful she is, how awesome she is, how she embraces us. Two months later, I get a letter from who? Gary Kelly, the president of Southwest Airlines, saying, oh, thank you, Quinny's one of our dreams, blah, 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 blah. And then there's two other letters that he sent to Quinny's two superiors. That's a letter in her file. That's a letter in the file. I write everybody that I connect with and write their boss. I wrote Utah Kent from Coca-Cola. You know, I took my book. I write and talk about other people, not about me. I praise somebody there. So now he's like, well, first of all, who's Lance? Who's by Latino Council? So now I'm on his radar. But he's also acknowledging Quinny. So I haven't seen Quinny, but I'm hoping I get an increase on my, on my tickets. <laughs> I'm hoping to get an increase, but I did it because it was genuine. You know, it was genuine, and I understand the corporate structure of making things work. You know, I will look up maybe the head person of the library and say how wonderful this Atkins has been to me. You follow what I'm saying? But I do things like that all the time. It's very important. I saw a call the other day, write your thank you letters out. It's I keep a stack of thank you cards. It costs $5 at Walmart, buy a book of stamps. I try to mail at least on a monthly basis about five thank you cards that people that touch me, not email, 
I send the let I send it in the mail. I sent Rosalind Brewer a thank you card because I saw her at Morehouse Homecoming and we were doing a fundraiser for Puerto Rico. She came up, gave me twenty dollars and stuck it in there and said, Thank you for doing this. And then I told her about her blessing that she did for me. You follow me? She didn't give me her address, but I just Google Starbucks headquarters. I think it's gonna get to her sooner or later. You follow me? And thanking her for supporting the initiative with Puerto Rico. Keep those dots connected and don't give up on those dots and those connections that you make. You can turn a casual yes, hello, no into something. Drill down. Drill down and make sure that you can distinguish yourself from the rest of this club of people asking for this, asking for that. You want to distinguish yourself as something special. I've been working, trying to get Wells Fargo for years. I met Michael Donnelly, he's the president of Wells Fargo. He set up some meetings for me. They hadn't given me not nothing but one meeting. That story still yet to be defined because I'm resilient. I'm not giving up on him. You hear me? I'm, I'm blessed that BBT just came on as our bank sponsor, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm still going to be talking. See, Wells Fargo had a hiccup. Right? So I said, well, this is a prime time. We <laughs> lack like, like, you know, and we're doing something the community. This, this makes good sense. You know, how can we be a resource for each other? And I got to know, and I still getting no's, but I'm not giving up. I just I'm putting on pause. Put it on pause. Reset. Stay focused on this, and then come back and touch it again. My granddaddy said, if you tend to your own crop, you know, water it. First you have to plant it, water it, and the sun sometimes you gotta take a step back. Just don't worry about what they're growing over there. If there's weeds over there, tend to your crop. That's how you eat. That's how you feed your family. And if you do it well, you feed it generation. Tend to your crop. Whatever projects you're doing, whatever you're doing, focus on that. I don't get caught up in Trump mania. I don't. I choose not to. I choose not to. I'm tending to my crop. I water it. I let the sun hit it. I take a step back. You follow me? But that's how you eat. When harvest time comes, you want to eat them. Everybody likes to eat, right? And I'm talking about eat and eat with get paid. You want to make sure you tend to your crop. Stay focused on what you're doing. Stop worrying about what other people doing over there. Even if you see weeds over there. And they're crying, that corn ain't right. They got them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Take care of your carrots. Take care of your tomatoes. Prune it. Take care of it. And sometimes when you get it, pass it on. Pass it on. Other people want to eat. Other people want to eat. They want to eat. We have to eat. That's the only way we survive. And it's okay to break bread with each other. It really is. It's okay to break bread with each other. It's okay. It's, that's how you have your perception and your perceived value high. They are right. I make money with them. I'm making money with her. There's some people that are close to me. Me. They won't talk about anything else other than something constructive about business. I, I don't shut them out. I just repurpose them. I put them over here. And when I allow for them to be in my space, but not too much, because they're not moving in the area that I'm moving in. You know, we all have friends that are just friends, not business associates. And that's, that's, that's the definition. Friends and not business associates. And you want to do more with your business associates, because sometimes your friends are just that, your friends. Staying relevant. Staying relevant is so key. You want to stay relevant because there's so much going on in today's time. How do you keep up? How do you keep your brand in the know? How do you oh God, they used to be or they touch and such? You know, you got to stay.
stay relevant in today's time. How do you stay relevant? That's up to you. That's up to you because you can pick and choose anything you want to do. And whatever you pick and choose, if Kenny's doing video and videography, he stays relevant in that particular space. And finance, you stay relevant. Health, wellness, stay relevant. Chick chat can stay relevant. You gotta stay relevant in your space. If you don't stay relevant, you're yesterday. <clears throat> right now, some people lost the election. And you know, you all you see them as so and so city council person, so and so. Now it's like, hmm. Are they still relevant? You know? Are they still, you know? Do I still want to associate with myself with them? You know, so you got to stay relevant. And I manage to stay relevant of making sure that we do things that are authentic, but also that that there's a shared vision of value. You know, that's how that's how we stay relevant. So what we did four years ago, we made a switch from our organization. We made a switch. Because I kept reading these corporate profiles and they kept saying triple bottom line. So we made a switch and start going green. We started paying attention to the environment, paying attention to clean water, solar, recycling, staying relevant. Staying relevant, staying relevant, staying relevant. So now we are black, brown, and green. Our organization, we're relevant. So there's 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 a lot in the wheelhouse that fits in the universal brand. So it's okay to diversify, but make sure it's still in the wheelhouse of your brand. So therefore, you can still be relevant. Being relevant is so key as part of your brand. You got to stay relevant. We partnered with a company called Novellus. Novellus is the largest aluminum company in the world. They started an initiative with Mercedes-Benz Stadium. They wanted to recycle cans for Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So I said, hmm, we're green now. I said, well, we're going to help you. We're going to come and pick up these cans and Volunteer to make things work. That was last year with no fellas. Kenny was a big part of that. Thank you, Kenny. And and, and, and Kenny can testify to that that we aligned ourselves with Novellas who had a partnership with Atlanta Falcons. We didn't know that was going to go that year. But every home game since last year, we are there with green shirts picking up cans. You follow me? That by picking up those cans with novellas got us to all the people with Mercedes Benz, the Blank Foundation, the cans proceeds go to Habitat. So it got us to the president of Habitat. You know, we're going to events with Habitat the president and Steve Fisher with novellas and Scott Jenkins with Mercedes Benz. That way, our touchables because it started with a can. It started with a can. So we said we're going to stay relevant with a can with a can that we made that thing work. I don't know if you know, Mercedes-Benz just got the award for being the most greenest stadium league certified. Who heard about that? Oh, you did? Yeah, so they are the most lead certified platinum status in the world, and we're a part of that. We now are the official green team. We, we partnered with, um, um, Novellas came on as a corporate sponsor. And I knew I wanted to get closer to the Blank Foundation. I pulled up Wikipedia. I pulled up off the blank. This was in August. I saw his birthday it was September 29th. Hmm. Okay, I got three weeks to get some form for four weeks. So I went out. I, um, and he was doing a green stadium and something green. So I went out and got a $500 Something I don't even know, it's called Ecosphere. It's, it's brown, water, and fish, and live plants. It's beautiful, the last five years I've been. All I know is something very unique, and it's something about green. I had it delivered to him on his birthday at the Blank Foundation. I knew, hey, I didn't want the office. But I know everyone else is there. 
you know, ladies, men, they see this unique gift to off the plane, saying happy birthday, thank you for making Atlanta green. This was last year. I didn't know off the plane, but he's my target. He's my target. He's my target, $9 million. Yeah, that's my target. <laughs> How do I line myself up off the plane? I'm picking up canes now, you know, one step closer, you follow me. I'm sending him a gift for his birthday, another step closer. So then, oh, a month later, I get a letter from off the plane, saying up in the office, thank you, you know, for this unique gift, blah, 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 cool. Two weeks later, I get an email from Joanne Ellis, secretary of Penelope, who's the president of the Blaine Foundation, they say, we want to join the Black and Latino Council for two years. Wow. Send me an invoice. That $500 got me 10. Wow. And a letter from Arthur Blank. Now Penelope knows me. Now I know Joanne Ellis. I, I like my little Zayters. So, you know, so now I know them. Or at least they know of us. And then, you know, we were picking up cans one day and I ended up in the stadium. This was at the Georgia Dome last year. I ended up on club level and I see Arthur Blank. And Arthur Blank was like, Jesus, he had nothing. <laughs> Old white men just <laughs> kissing his ring. You hear me? It was just kissing his ring. Just I mean, all around him, and I just, I, all the way, right there with Kenny, he's right there. I said, this is my chance, oh, wow. And I swear, I just had tunnel vision. I went straight to Arthur Blaine, just straight to him. And I swear to people, this guy out of my way. I promise to God, I'm going to make this guy out of my way. And I shook his hand. How you doing, Mr. Blaine? How you doing? Did you get my birthday gift, the Eagle Spear? Oh, that was you! You follow me? I had an angle to have a conversation with him. And we had a light outside. I just told him to say his birthday and it was Scott Jenkins. He says, yeah. He said, the heat Scott's the general manager. He said, did you tell him? Did he tell you that his seat is right next to mine? I said, no, I saw your parking space. You know, but I'm having a conversation all the way. Um, you, you follow me? Um, Atlanta United just sent us a check. The Blake Foundation sent us a check. Atlanta United is a member of the Black Latino House. It's the first professional team we had in the first organization that the Blake Foundation aligned Atlanta United Group was our organization. Our organization. Not the Georgia Hispanic, not the Latin American Association. Follow me. Black and Latino Council. I sent the letter. I sent, I sent the birthday gift, $500 gift that somebody donated to me. I didn't pay $500 to let you know. But that's, that's just the favor of God. You know, that's the favor of God. I said, I'm looking for something unique. So I said, I got something, you know, one of my touchables. I had an award from last year at Eco, and I have one left over. It cost five hundred dollars. Come and get it, and I went and got it. My touchable gave me a gift. My friend who's Uber driver delivered it to me. You follow? Me? You got the power. You have the power. You have the power. You have the power to connect the dots, be different, make it work. If there's someone you want to meet, Google them, see when their birthday is or something else, or if you see a nice article, that gives you an angle to say, happy birthday, or great write-up, or you can follow me. It gives you an angle, it gives you an entry point. Your entry point is very important of how you enter it. There was a scene years ago, Bill uh, Cosby show. And he was talking about this girl, this guy was coming in, he was dating his sister, the daughter, I don't know if you remember it. And he came in and his, his presentation was so wack. Bill said, Bill said, you came in here like you was a, a, a trash can, you know, garbage man or something. He, he said, you came in here so wrong. Your entry point was inappropriate. You want to make sure your entry point to a person or organization is at the level you want it to be at. It's something thoughtful, something unique. You gotta break through the club. You got to figure out a way to break through the club. And birthdays for me work out well, you know. They work out well. Identify, see it, reach out. 
Everybody has a mailing address if they have a business. Yeah. Find a mailing address, put their name on it, and send them something. Just that simple. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. But guess what? It's like you practice in your jump shot. If you always practice, and you're going to get a hit every now and then. You're going to get a hit. And it works. It really works. Um, and I'm happy it works. I'm happy. Question? Okay. How to develop a diverse power and circle of friends and business partners? We, again, we have to go outside our comfort zone. We have to mix it up. There was a group a long time ago called the Jewish and Black Alliance. And it was at the Jewish Temple. I was like, let me see what this is about. <clears throat> and I went to the meeting and they had a retreat. And I stepped out of my comfort zone and met some phenomenal people that didn't look like me, had a different interest, but their only interest of uh, the alliance was just to get to know each other better. Just to get to know each other better. But go out of your comfort zone and diversify. Diversify, diversify. Please, please do not get comfortable in your own skin. Sometimes you want to feel a little uncomfortable. That's how you stretch. You want to feel a little uncomfortable, uncomfortable to make it work. So diversify, diversify. Joining the Black and Latino Council will help you diversify. You follow, that's real talk. That will help you diversify. I hope a couple of you join. Or at least attend one of our events, okay? Diversify, make it work. Stretch, stretch, go out there. When is your event coming up? Um, we actually have one coming up in a couple of weeks. Right. Actually, we have a sneaker week in Atlanta going on right now, and it's uh, ending on November 21st, I think. See her out there, she might need some volunteers. Yes. That might help you out. We also have an MLK Day race coming up, too. This is just, you know, this, as far as networking, yes. and pass it out, but you want to diversify, and, and that's how you make it work. I diversify because I said, let me just do a session in Bucket. You know, let me come to Buckhead. So I call my uh, my librarian at uh, East Point, right? He gave me a good referral, right? And here we are at East Point. I mean, to get on Buckhead. But I stretched to come out to Buckhead. You know, it mean you want to people. But you want to shake yourself up. You want to mix it up, you know. Do something different. Do something different. Engage in something different that's near and dear to your heart or that you want to do. Please, you will. It's so rewarding. It is very rewarding. But that's how you have to diversify. Diversify. Who has in this room a friend that doesn't look like them? All right. <laughs> no, really. A lot of people's circle is just, I said friend, I say associate. See, a lot of people, you want to diversify. You want to diversify. It's very important. That's how you stretch. That's how you expand. And that's how you increase your exposure. You definitely have to increase your exposure that way. So I suggest that you stretch. I suggest that you take a step and find something that, that's dear to your heart that you want to do. Because you have to be authentic about it. That lady who was an attorney, if she didn't feel that she would you know, help crack babies, you know, she wouldn't be happy to live there. You know what I'm saying? But she went down there and had little crack babies. And I shouldn't say it like that, but babies are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I told you. Know, <laughs> This is very important. Follow up and execute. One of my strengths is following up. You got to follow up. You, when you meet somebody, you talk to somebody, you want to follow up. Can you define what follow up is? Anyone? Yes. Making up 
phone call mm -hmm. a similar amount mm -hmm. or get, get on a Facebook page, mm -hmm. Twitter, whatever mm -hmm. it takes to get a Making yourself relevant to them after the fact. Exactly, because keep in mind, sometimes people go to, in a month, somebody might go to one, two, or three events, you know, and you you might touch different people. So two months later, you're really just a blur of memory or just a card on the table. The ones that follow up become a blip on your radar. You know, and if you keep following up, you become more relevant, you keep following up. You know. How many times you say, well, we're going to do lunch? And you never do lunch. I'm going to call you, we're going to get together. And it never happens. I usually say, you know, before the month ends, let's, let's circle back around and get together. So it gives me a 30-day window. And then I will send them an email with a date and say, well, I'm available Monday and Tuesday between 11 and 2. Let me know if this works for you. If not, send me an alternative date. So therefore, I'm trying to close that loop. If they're serious about getting together, I've given them some dates. So now they can say, well, Monday's good. Put a call. Oh, great. Well, this is not good. How about this day? you got to follow up. you got to follow up. you got to execute. Oh, that you, you. Don't say I forgot. I forget. You have to make sure that you. Yes, sir. Well, what about the situation where you'll give them like alternative dates, but they don't follow up back with you? Is that a dead deal? Oh, just revisit it later on. That happens all the time, and sometimes I will resend the email three or four days later. You know, and sometimes I would just say, okay, let me set that right there. And then oh. go at the fish that's biting. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, you know, that fish is still there, but you gotta, cause see, what you're doing, you, you'll probably follow up on, say, five people. You might get two nibbles. Those two nibbles, you keep it going. And those other ones that you choose, some of them will fall off. You can't do everything. But you might repurpose that one and bring them back in one more time. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's a good opportunity to utilize the technology at hand. Make a calendar of appointments to remind yourself to follow up. That's <laughs> as me, but most people don't. That's right. <laughs> make a calendar to make those reminders to alert you to follow up. Give them that time is what I'm saying. Because sometimes, you know, they just get busy and didn't, didn't intentionally forget. They just got caught up. That's so exactly right. You have a reminder set your following. We, we, don't, we don't utilize our technology like we should. I am decided on it. Well, we can all do that. Mm -hmm. That's the way I like to look at it. We can all. What's the SU stand for? Southern White Club Southern. Like I said, what you said. Um, follow up is key. Follow up is key. And sometimes, you know, we get inundated with emails, but guess what? They still are effective. And sometimes when I send emails and people don't answer, I would put it, it just always gets them. I would say, um, Earth to Amber. <laughs> you know, right then, Earth to Amber, hi, you know. And then they, they, they will, they do, like, they do a light little chuckle, and then they hit the, they hit the inbox. You know, they, they pull it up. <laughs> also, sometimes when you send an email, try to put some of the nuggets in the subject line. Mm. Because you know why? Some people don't click it. Follow up. Let's see what we can do lunch. You know, chance meeting. So glad we met. You, you know, always put, because how many times do you just read the subject line and keep going? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Put the nuggets in there. Because people, we are bombarded with emails. I'm not saying don't use them, they work. Mm -hmm. We are bombarded. I, for myself, do not send emails out after 9 o'clock. I don't. I just don't. Yeah. Um, if Monday morning, I try not to send emails out. You know, I just don't. Because Monday, people are checking. Tuesday's the best time because they can clean up everything. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Friday afternoons usually get lost too. You said Fridays? Fridays they get lost too. Friday afternoon, 
Yeah. Say that again? I was just saying Friday afternoons they get lost too. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I, I shut off at two o'clock now on Friday. Okay. Yeah. I shut off on Friday at two o'clock. I might go to a cigar bar or something, you know. Another form of networking. You know, I might go out and touch some people or ride out to Buckhead and meet Miss Atkins if that's okay. <laughs> You know, um, but you know, and you still have the books there, by the way. I bought five books. I have two that I'm using for gifts. I gave one to somebody else. Great books. So after this, check out that book sale. Um, you find jewels in there sometimes. You really do. You really do. Yes. Can I ask a question from the library? Do you all have a book board where you can post it, um, events and things like that? We do. Okay. Um, the only thing is, um, you just can't have money on it. Okay. As long as it doesn't have a dollar value on it. Okay. And, and this is a good resource. Gentlemen, if you want to do like a help or call, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one communication, it's a good, no charge, they give you room, great facility, and guess what? You can have it at any library. You follow me? It's a great place. One of our members, they they um they do coding. So I said, you know what? You need to do a coding class at the library. Mm -hmm. He said his coding class up before I said my class up. He's so quick. He took that information, he followed up. He said, oh, my class, I said, <laughs> he, I had to step on my game. You know, really. But it's a great tool. We have so many resources that sometimes we don't know about or we don't use. But this is a great space to have, free parking, great setup, everything is nice. And I paid zero dollars. You see what I'm saying? You can keep a high profile and it does not have to be costly. You, you can do it. You really can do it. Can you get a question? You're good? Okay. So you want to make sure you follow up and you want to make sure you execute. And there's so many layers to execute because of social media. You got to pace yourself when you execute yourself. When, when you want to have something and you want to hit four or five Facebook group pages and you want to tweet so and so and hit LinkedIn, pace yourself on your execution. Even in business, as far as your meetings and your schedule, Pace yourself. Pace yourself. Take your time. When I start my day, I have a list of five or ten things that I, I write it out. I'm old school. I write it out. I'm old. And I might say, send my emails out, do my thank you cards, make this call, call the Hawks, do this, and I check it off. I check. I never finish the whole list. But at least I start my day off and I can and I have my check box. I feel much better. I feel much better than I yes. Oh, I was just gonna say with the check box, one of the things that I've been told and I've heard a couple of times is not to open your email immediately when you wake up. Because usually that then becomes your list. That's exactly so. right. And, and, and again, that's uh, 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 yes, I'm, and, and, like that. And that's why again I look at this. The blue sky, the green trees, and I wait for a bird to say, you know, the church. I wait and I say, ah, you know, I can just, as you know, my uh, associate says, I walk down that hill. I don't run. You know, I think some people know that story. You know, I walk down that hill. Don't run. Don't run. That's right. That's right. And your success record will be just as good. Mm walk down that hill because you can see you get clarity you get clarity you know sometimes I have to get out of the office and I walk or sometimes I get out of the office and I will drive someplace you know off the beaten path because all of a sudden my brain is just re-energized with ideas and things like, oh that's how I should do that oh that's you know sometimes you have to change your environment and next you know, these ideas just start bubbling up and it's come to you. The other day I had a great epiphany. I was like, wow, yes, yes. And in a 15 minute ride, I figured out how I was going to do something in 2018. Then I went back and I had a virtual assistant. I called her up and said, well, I need this, I need that, I need this, you know. 
and I checked it all. You know, I checked it all. And, uh, hopefully one day, two, three, four things get in, she gives it to me, you know. But I always say, let me have it by such and such time. So you give them a window. Don't just leave it open. Put some closure or a date in there so you, the way you drive that car is the way you start that car. You understand what I'm saying? You got to start that car correctly, socially and professionally. The way you drive that car is the way you start that car. So you start that thing right, you take your time, you execute, you follow up, you listen to the words, you, you know, then you know that we're here. And when we're here, this is, this is, this is, you feel it? Yeah, this is this is now keep in mind, I laid out at 4 30 this morning. Okay? <laughs> so keep in mind, keep in mind, that is totally good. Okay, here we go. Number 10. I run into so many people. You know what they say? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm about to, I'm gonna, I'm fixing to stop talking about it. Stop, stop, stop running your mouth with you gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Some people phase you out because they too tired of you saying I'm gonna. You be like, oh, okay, here we go again. <laughs> Next week they gonna do something and they thinking, you know, then they looking at somebody's garden over there because they're weeds. No, stop. Stop talking about it. I have tried to be a be about it person. For two years, I could not get a job because I had a case of pending felony with that the cab county scandal. So for two years, no company would touch Lance. They wouldn't touch me. They wouldn't touch me. They wouldn't touch me. I just had to be quiet. I had to figure out how, how to repurpose myself, how to rebrand myself. Two years I was in the wilderness. I was able to get some consulting contracts and nightclubs. Clubs, because that was part of my area of marketing. But I could not get a corporate job because I had a pending felony. For two years they didn't take this charge that I had to court. Because they didn't have dropped it after two years, but for two years, I was, Colin, did you know me then? Ugly. Or you knew ugly? Wasn't it ugly? Yeah. Wasn't it fierce? It was just ugly. <laughs> I was in the news not one day, but 20 days. Uh, 20 days of negative press on TV. 20 days. You know, from 750, AJC, you know, I was in the news of negative stuff. And 98% of it was not me. They got the name right. That's the 2%. You follow me? Wow. All that other stuff, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I was, like I said, I thought it was on mine. So I said, I got to be about it. I just got to figure a way to be about it. I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to be about it. So in essence to being about it, this is doing what you say. Do what you say. Do what you say. If you do what you say, guess what? You earn credibility. You earn things in your brain. Do what you say. I'm so tired of hearing I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm about to. It's, it's, some people you can get on the phone and within three minutes or two minutes you realize that they're toxic. They're draining your energy. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I gotta I got take this call. <laughs> <laughs> For real. For real. For real. they just toxic. they toxic. Stop it. When I rebuilt my brand, I did it pretty much 
if you don't mind me shaking your hand again. One handshake at a time. One handshake at a time. Mm -hmm. One conversation at a time. One email at a time. One event at a time. Just take your time. But one handshake at a time will help you connect with people authentically. Mm -hmm. One email, just because you can't do it all. Just do what you do. You know, we don't know what we don't know. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, that's true. You, you know, but what you do know, we know. And I know that I had to live. I had to make a living. I had to build a brand. I had to build a network. I had to re-establish myself in Atlanta. And I wasn't in line with, I used to work for Congress as well. I wasn't in line with Congress. I wasn't in line with the Department of Commerce. I wasn't in line with um, the Cab County. I had no alignment. So I was just me, me, and I just took a step, said I was going to do something, I did it. It was mediocre, but I did it. I didn't lose no money, just happy that I broke even. You know sometimes you to be happy to break even, or at least come close. <laughs> Please come close. Please come close. Please come close. He's like, okay, okay. But, but, but that's how you, you, you do it. And let me tell you something. When you think people aren't watching, they're watching. I never knew this young lady said she followed me. I didn't know. But they, 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 they follow. When you think people aren't watching, they are watching you. They, they, so make sure they're watching you. I got an email from LinkedIn. It was the American Red Cross. Hey, Lance. Hi. Um, we're just expanding our board. Would you like to be on our board? Red Cross? Shoot. Send me your resume, blah, 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 I mean, your bio, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, but this is the Red Cross on LinkedIn. Hit me up. I said, okay. She says, well, we want to expand our Hispanic outreach. So I thought they were going to ask me to recommend a Latino. They said, no, we want you on the board. But I didn't know they was tracking me. So I do sit on the board of American Red Cross today. I said, yeah, I'll be on your board. Yeah, I want to get in that space. I want to see, <laughs> I want to expand my touchables. So Terry, uh, the president of American Red Cross in Georgia, I, I'm just feeling her out. Been to a couple of meetings. Well, we've been, I've been on a year now. But a couple of, you know, working with them. And now I'm looking at some of the monetization pieces. You follow me? Uh, I can bring in because they need help in communication. They need help in this. They need that. All these disasters. I'm trying to figure out. They, I'm already helping them hire some Latinos because they want Spanish-speaking people. But, you know, so now, because it's only thing, you never know who is watching you. You never know who's watching you. You never, please hit me up so I can, you know, just say, hey, man, okay? Yeah, but you never know who's watching you. So that goes back to social media, it goes back to when you go into a restaurant, a club. I don't know how these people want to back that thing up on, on social media. You know what I'm saying? And then look up and they, you know, that's not part of the brand that you think they, that they are. You know, they're real people, but you're like, wow. You never know who's watching you. You never know who's looking at you. You never know who's talking about you, good or bad. So make sure the space, the conversations, and everything that you have, you have nothing to worry about. Yes. I'm going to tell you how we connected. Okay. You did a. Keep it clean now. It is very <laughs> And you were looking for someone to frame his award. Mm -hmm. And I referred one of my clients to you. And you used Ms. E.O. Watts. Wow. Full circle. And I used it, right? You did. Wow. See? You did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't know Al Sharpton. 
but I know that he had a National Action Network office here. I befriended the young lady here. You follow me? And made good contact with her, so I let her carry my water to Al Sharpton and make it work. And also, so it was, it's tied with President Obama, too. It was keep the change in the show, remember that. So, good, good, good. She kept it clean, she kept it nice, didn't she? That <laughs> <laughs> uh, came back to bite me, too, by the way. I thought I was going to run for office for Public Service Commissioner. I ran two times, didn't win. Nobody gave Lance a chance, that was my slogan. <laughs> 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 to work for you, you, and you. <laughs> there you go. But I was, because of the statewide, I was registered as a Republican. Right? Those pictures were Al Sharpton. This is the first thing the Republicans pulled up. And said, oh, look at this guy. And then they pulled up that other little negative history. Well, that was the end of me with all. <laughs> okay. Because they, because they tarnished the brand. And then I was going, I went for public service commission, so it was nonpartisan, but still, they tarnished that brand, but I love some Al Sharp, so I'm like, you know, he's a powerful man. Okay. So I'm like, that was only just one no of politics, though. Say that again, sir? That was only just one no of politics. That was one no, that was one no. Like I said, I ran three times, and um, <coughs> I'm okay in the space that I'm in right now. I have a, a lot more, um, influence and stuff than running and as you live long enough, you know, you, your journey, uh, you, you just not for everybody to know, you know what I'm saying? So you, sometimes you want to run while you're younger and, you know, you don't have to be ticket or, or bankruptcy, take it for your talk, you follow me? So you, you know, that's real talk, but um, you never know. Okie dokie, I think we're doing pretty good. So stop talking about it, be about it. Just be about it. Be about it. Don't talk about it. And sometimes when people stop saying, I'm gonna say, you know what? Take a breath and say, you know, I'd like for our conversation to be on another tone. Can we, you know, some, I, I have this guy, he does real estate, one of my closest friends, and he's always talking about women to me. Because we guys, that's, you know, I said, let me tell you something. You know I just bought this building, this building here, I'm looking for this property, this property. You never came up to me. We don't talk anything about real estate. Why? why? Tell me why. <laughs> don't come to me talking about that person, this person. I know. You've been in real estate for 20 years. And well, you should be presenting some deals to me. Well, it's this land over here. I just follow this track by Mars. Let's go down here. By. That, don't come to me. Don't come to me. On, on, on that level, come to me about some business. So I redirected his conversation. And it's still sitting there. That's real talk. So he chooses not to pick it up, and he's, he's a friend that I put right over there. Wow. I still associate with him. He called yesterday, that wasn't available. That's real talk, too. That wasn't available. It wasn't available. Ain't that time? Okay, we the last one right here. The ask versus the give. I like to think I build what is my power base by giving. I'm a giver. When you're a giver, I give. I give. So I just create a, a, a space of just goodness because I give. And you create, you can create a power base by giving. Give. I'm a, I'm a giver. Um, I had a chance to meet again. I mentioned Scott Jenkins. He's over the general. He's the general manager for Mercedes Benz Stadium. I, I, I say he's a friend of mine. So I went to what you call the Queen Sports Alliance, which he's the chair of, and we joined that group. And I was in Chicago. And Scott was being chair of the Queen Sports Alliance. It's a phenomenal group. But his mother was there. Mother's there, she was sitting by herself. And my baby, I said, Oh, that's Scott's mom. <laughs> you know, she's sitting by herself. And see, I took care of my grandmother for three years. She's in heaven now, she's in Washington, you know. So I gravitate to elves. I know how to nurture them. I'm, you know, boom. Hey, how you doing? I'm Lance, I'm Scott's friend. I'm down, mom. Hey, 
hey, Thelma, can I get you something? Can you get me a burger? I want to taste some wine. By the time we had two glasses of wine and a little, little mini hamburgers, Scott said, you are, I went fine, Scott. Go on. You hit me? We're fine. I just sent Thelma a, a th um, Thanksgiving card last week. And she sent me two. We, we call us on the back channel with, with, with Stella Jenkins. You know, so authentic. When she comes in town, when my grandma was alive, we met down at Atlantic Station. Scott, his family, my grandma, we got there at Kilowatts and Ice Cream, just people watching. You uh hear? -huh. That's an authentic relationship yeah. with a guy. That if I go to Mercedes Benz Stadium right now with all of you, guess what it would be? Where would be, Kenny? We'll be in. Yes. Scott, I'm down. You hear me? That's an authentic relationship. Authentic. Scott, I want to send your mother something for Christmas. What should I send her? Land, she likes Neely's candies. I've never heard of Neely's. Who's heard of Neely's candies? I didn't know it. I looked online and like 19 bucks, 21 bucks, plus shipping, like not even $30. I sent it to her. Didn't know that that was her and her husband's. He's, he was in heaven now. That's that little tree. She said, oh, Lance, you scored big with me. Come on, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Nice. Um, those relationships, those back channels, those back channels, I got a back channel to the GM of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Mm -hmm. Through his mama. It's authentic. You know? It's real. September 17th, it was a football game here. She was in town. I was in the suite kicking it. And it was 11.50 something and it was leaving. And they was in the parking lot in the car. And I said, Scott, I'm coming to meet your mom. I went to meet the mom. And by this time, it's 12 o'clock. My birthday is September 18th. Thelma and all of them stopped singing me happy birthday. Aww. Oh, I had man tears. <laughs> I had man tears. This is a true story. That was this year. But relationships are important. Connectivity is important. I went to an event, and it was this another young lady with gray hair, and it was just a high-powered event, and I just started talking to her. She said, oh, you know, my husband's a chairman of the board. You need to meet him. You follow me? So she took me right this way to meet the husband. Nothing ever happened out of that relationship, but you never know who you're talking to, who's connected to someone who's connected. So don't assume, you know, always, always, always put a smile on your face. Say, how are you doing? Thank you. You know, light conversation, yes. Correction. Nothing's happened yet. That's Nothing's happened yet. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> Nothing's happened yet. Um, I'm still watering that crop. So, I am a giver. I'm a giver. But when you ask, make sure it's the correct ask. My client of Arizona's restaurant, the owner, <clears throat> he's always calling me for tickets to the game. Why are you calling me for tickets to the game? That's right. That's your ask me. Tickets to the game. You think I'm going to use that as well? No. Make sure your ask has some weight on it. Mm. Don't ask nothing small. When I sent that proposal to the Blank Foundation, I asked for $335,000 over three years, which is 100 something a year. You follow me? But I made sure my ass was on the level that they used to get it. You know, I didn't want no 10, no 5, no 20. That was $335,000. Didn't blink. Didn't get it, but didn't blink. They did come back to the table and whisper me and, and show me some love. But you gotta make sure the ass is a real ass. When I went for Delta, I asked Delta, I said, I want $75,000. 
You follow me? So right now we're, we're at a spot about 25, 10,000 tickets and 15,000. You follow me? They want to make sure they get an ROI. Work from, but, but I make sure my ass was something in the realm. Make sure your ass has some weight on it. Make sure your ass is like, most people of color, no disrespect, if they're trying to do a contract, it's 2500 5000 maybe ten, And they're going to get the five, and maybe the 25. But you know your work is worth 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand. Don't ask for it. Now you might want to negotiate, but at least have a threshold that will get you there. If you start out with five and end up with a thousand, that's why you got the thousand. Because you have five. Have a real ass with some weight on it. And do not. When I get the ass, I don't come in there with a teaspoon. I come in there with one. You hear me? I want to fill it up. Have a real ass with some weight on it. Some good numbers. Know your value, know your worth. Granted, we need to keep our lights on. Granted, we take whatever, you know, but you got to understand that they need to know how you see yourself and your body of work and what you're thinking about. Make stretch. Make that ass. I didn't get to 25 from Walmart asking for 25. I asked about 150. You know? It took a minute. But make sure your ass has some weight on it. You follow me? Do not belittle yourself in your value. Don't be scared. You know, um, again, got boy meets girl. Girl meets guy. Hey, baby, you want to go out? Yeah, I want to go out. Okay then, where you want to go? You know what the, you know what the ladies say. They want to go someplace they not. You hear me? What do you want to drink? A double Hennessy. You see, they know that that's the ass. They, 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 you know, they gonna make you stretch or just make you do what you do. Boss up. But you gotta put a value. So they put a value. Women put a value on them. You know, no, we ain't going to McDonald's. <laughs> no, they frown. They got an attitude. You better take me someplace nice. You hear me? And the man better deliver if he wants to continue that conversation. Plus, plus, you gotta deliver. So make sure your ask is of value or even supersede. Just don't be scared. Don't be scared to reach and stretch and ask and know your value. Don't be scared. I lose more business sometimes because I over ask. And they don't come back and say, well, I don't say, well, you asked too much. I said, well, why you didn't come off? Or you should have just came back and we started conversations. You know, because we all want to eat. Is that correct? You know, a deal is a deal. So make sure when you give, give genuinely, authentically. My motto is I do what I can when I can. If you do that, you build your power base. That's how I do, by giving. Some people build their power base by throwing money around. You know, oh man, you know, you know. You, but you have to build your power base. Whatever you have is your resources. Some people have a skill set and say, well, I can do this for you. So give. There's nothing wrong with giving. And it sure doesn't wrong with asking. You hear me? And that's why they tell everyone who's running for office to what? Ask for your vote. In that last debate, that other opponent of Keisha Lance, twice she says, I want you to vote for me. She asked for that vote. The one that I'm supporting, Ms. Bottoms, she never asked for the I said, God, I think that's a missed opportunity on my TV. And she didn't ask for that vote. I just hope you vote for me. I want you to vote for me. No, you ask. That's a what is girl? What is girl? How you doing? You wanna come over tonight? You got, how do you get them to come over? You ask. That's real talk. We grown, right? That's real talk. You gotta ask. Ask. Don't be scared. Hi. I was here um, at the event today and I really enjoyed it. I was very
very enlightened and I, um, I have a lot of takeaways and um, I was able to network with several other um, people and I'm just thrilled to be here today. Thank you. Outstanding session. Very impressive. Absolutely. Hey, I'm Racine of Racine Riker and Associates and I'm finally getting to hang out with Lance for I mean, half a day, half a day. I've learned so much. I'm taking about 10 pages of notes myself. My husband is actually going to another workshop, so we're actually doing a duo, you know, um, you know, building our businesses today and we thank you so much and hey, looking for a great relationship and building relationships. We have so much in common, so I look forward to the next one. Have a great one. Awesome, awesome workshop. I, I consider myself a master networker, but definitely learned quite a bit from you. And it helped me to organize a lot of the things that I've already done, but needed to implement um, in a strategic way. So I'm so grateful uh, for taking this class. And I recommend anybody, whether you think you're a master networker, or if you're new to getting into networking, to take Lance's class. Awesome job. We came down New Orleans to attend both the um, Master Networking class and the DBE Certification class. And we got to say, it was great instructors, great information. They really took us from one point to the next to show us what we need to do going forward in our business to make sure everything we have is what's needed to get these certifications and to get our name out and get brand. I think it's going to help us build a great foundation for our company moving forward. And I am here with Lance and his Art of Networking seminar. It was fantastic. He gave us so much information, so many great nuggets that we can use to make sure that we're enhancing our business and doing all things we need to do. So thank you, Lance, for everything that you've done for us today. And so much that we're going to be doing together as partners later on. Talk to you tomorrow.